Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. This is Alex Bennett, and this is The Ramble. We go from now until midnight Eastern Time on the eastern coast of the United States and uh, all over the world on the World Wide Web. Hey, listen, uh, we uh, we got to talk some politics. We're going to talk a lot of different stuff with an old friend of ours whose job it is to make you laugh at politics, and that's kind of hard to do these days. Well, I'll try it again. <laughs> Having a swig of his early morning booze. <laughs> How do we know that's not vodka, huh? huh? How do we know that's not vodka? That's Will Durst, ladies and gentlemen. How you doing, everybody? It's good to see you. It's a little early for it, me, but it's good to see you, you nonetheless. Well, you, you like to do this at 9 in the morning. You know, for a comedian, you get up awfully early. Yeah, um, I don't know. I'm, I'm a kind of a writer or something, so I don't know. Uh, it just seems like I have to get up yeah. and do something. Yeah, yeah. So how have you been? Uh, more vodka. Uh, how have you been? Uh, went to, uh, let's see, we went to spring training. Yes, to, and how was the, it? After the last time we talked to you, and then we came home for a week. And then last week, we went to Vegas. And we saw Hall and Oates, Daryl Hall and John Oates. And then we saw the Beatles Cirque du Soleil love thing, which was really good. Yeah. And, uh, and, and did you, did you... so we've been on two little trips, Arizona and Las Vegas. You know, Pearl is living in Vegas. Yeah, that's what I hear. Yeah. I hear he's doing well. So you didn't... Steve Kravitz just moved there, too. Kravitz moved there? What is it? All, all these comics are, it's like becoming the uh, the Miami for comics. Uh, <laughs> yeah. What can yeah, I say? I you're right. Uh, anyway, uh, how, uh, you know. How have uh, you been? I've been okay. You know, I can't, uh, I can't complain. I mean, I should, I can complain, but that's my nature. Oh, yes, you can complain. Yes. But I, but basically compared to other people I know. Uh, I'm doing okay because they're dead, you know, so. Yeah. yeah. I just had another friend die on me, you know. Uh, it, it, mm. This is what happens when you, it, it, I said, why do, why do I have so many people dying on me? And the answer is because I've lived to be this old. <laughs> you know, if I hadn't lived to be this old, all these people wouldn't be dying. They'd all be saying, why, oh, Alex, did you hear about him? Why? And yeah, so many yeah. people I know who are dying because, uh, anyway. It'd be another example. It's a mitzvah. I should just say, hey, well, another one's gone, but I'm still here. <clears throat> you know? To lament their passing. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I think that's why it's important that we that we do acknowledge the fact that people are are moving on. Yes, yes. And and I went moving on. It's like, yeah, they rent their van and went to Nevada or something. Well, I went to a memorial the other day for uh, for a guy who died, just recently died, uh, worked with me on Midnight Blue years ago and used to call this oh. program uh, uh, rather frequently, uh, named John Rockwell. And uh, they held a memorial for him in a bar that he used to like to frequent. So, uh, Is he a New Yorker? I, yeah. Yeah. So I, yeah. So I, I went to that and uh, uh, met up with an old friend. Basically, there was only one person there I knew. I mean, because all the other people were his friends, and these were not people I knew. Because I this guy worked with me, what, 30 years ago, 35 years ago, something like that. Midnight Blue? Midnight Blue, yeah. Yeah, that was the late 70s. Yeah, yeah. So, that was 40 years ago. As if, well, sh shut up. Shut the fuck up. Everybody always corrects me. Oh, no, that was 40 years ago. Oh, really? Oh, thank you very much, you know. So the only guy I was so impressed when you came to town with Midnight Blue because I had heard about Midnight Blue. Yeah, yeah. Because I was doing documentaries in Milwaukee, 
and Midnight Blue was, you know, it's this underground, it's cutting edge, it's uh, the top of uh, what is happening today in terms of video. Yeah. And, uh, and, yeah. Well, yes, it was. And if I have to, uh, you know, people always come up to me every now and then in an interview or something and go, and you did this Midnight Blue in New York, and, you know, and I go, yeah, I did. And, I, and then I tell them that of all the things I've done in my career, that's the thing I'm singly most proud of is Midnight Blue. Well, it broke so many barriers. Yeah, well, I mean, I did something that hadn't been done before, right? And, and I think that's important, you know, and I broke barriers in, in what we were then calling television and now we just call video. Uh, and uh, so I'm very proud of that achievement. Uh, yeah. I have well, no, no qualms with- about it. There, there was you, and there was uh, what was that thing that became? There was the Groove Tube. Remember the well, Groove Tube? Well, the Groove tube? tube was my friend Steve Gruber, another my probably one of my best friends who died a couple of years back. Uh, uh, and those were, and then there was, uh, and then I came out here, and there was Video West, and yeah. I'm sure there were many other collectives in. Uh, Actually, New York. I, I worked with Video West. Yeah, yeah, I did uh, the, the MTV stuff with them. I was on MTV. This is a great story. I was M- on MTV for the first year of its life, okay, doing reports as a reporter for uh, MTV News. But really what it was, I sat in an announce booth and I was the L.A. reporter. Never went to L.A., but I just narrated these clips, right? Mm-hmm. This is Alex Bennett from Los Angeles or Hollywood, you know, and then blah, 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 and then they would show, the video would be shown. And, um, this thing called MTV. So they auditioned me for it uh, over at Video West, and that was the last I heard of it. So now I, my bit, my boss at uh, Live 105 said, "Hey, listen, uh, Ed, name was Ed Cramp. Let's go down to to uh, San Jose tonight. They're going to be premiering a new thing. They're going to start showing it down there called MTV, and they they're having a, a rollout party." So I go to the rollout party, and they then they say, okay, we want you all to gather around, and we're going to show you a clip of what MTV is all about. And they show this clip of MTV, and in the middle of it, hi, this is Alex Bennett from Hollywood. <laughs> and, so they had used your audition? And every, everybody turns around and looks at me and says, <laughs> you work for this new MTV? And I said, I guess I do now. <laughs> and it uh, what? Uh, I think I got like a stipend, like 35 bucks a clip or whatever. Uh, but um, I then, they gave, uh, I called them and I said, well, what happened? I mean, all of a sudden I'm in this clip and they said, oh yeah, we forgot to tell you, we're hiring you to be the Los Angeles guy. So, or Hollywood guy. So, um, for the first year, I'm on MTV. And then they decide, they drop the whole Video West thing of supplying clips. They figure they'll do it themselves. They'll do MTV News themselves. Uh, and I think they even had a news reporter by the name of Matt Lauer they were going to use. Okay. Uh, and they dropped it about the time that MTV wound up in San Francisco. And every time I tell the story that I was on MTV for its first year, nobody believes me. That I was there, the, I was on the air the first day MTV ever went on. Wow. Yeah. And wow. Nobody, but nobody believed me because I wasn't on anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So that was my... Didn't, didn't you also uh, be the first human to uh, step onto the... Uh, huh. The AstroTurf? Yes, AstroTurf, Astro. yeah. Yeah, people yeah. people used to kid me about that. I just, the, we were, I was, um, this was Houston, Texas. I can't remember the year now. Uh, God, I, <laughs> it had to be sometime between, oh, 65 and, uh, yeah. when I go to New York. I went 60, to New York. 68, yeah. I was in New York in the 70s. Uh, so I was about 68 or something what like that. What was your name? Uh, I was doing James Bond at the time. And, and they, uh, 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 did you get away with that? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I got away with it better than the guy who was really British up in Dallas doing the same thing. 
Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. They, they uh, the British consul would invite me over to see them and so on. And uh, it was so Houston and Dallas. Both yeah. Had well, when I got the job, I got the job auditioning with a British accent. And then they said, we want to hire you. And I said, well, I have something to tell you. And they said, what? And I said, I'm not British. And, uh, I mean, there's a whole backstory about how they got a hold of me. It's through my father who said, do you know this guy named Percy McGuire? That was the name I used. The Liverpool lip, I called myself. <laughs> and, and in, my, in my audition, yeah. And I said, yes, I do. And they said, you know where we can find him? I said, you're talking to him. And they said, you know, you're not British. And I said, no. They said, could you be? I said, sure. Could you be all the time? What do you mean? Well, if we bring you into Houston, we don't want anybody to know you're not British. So I had to, every time, real life? every time I left the house, I had to be British for a year or a year and a half, something like that. And, and 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 the best part about this story is a few years later in, okay, <laughs> I love this, a few years later in, uh, I started, I realized that my life being the British guy on radio was going the way of all flesh. You know, I mean, come on, enough is enough. So I start slowly losing my accent to the point where I'm not even using it. Hi, this is James Bond, you know. And some people would come to me and say, you know, you're losing your English accent a bit. Because <laughs> I was from California, and to a Texan, that's a British accent, you know. <laughs> but anyway, um, so I took the job, and I was just British all the time, you know. And I would come home to my wife and say, hello, dear, how are you? And, and she would say, you're home. Cut it out, <laughs> you know. And this, after a while, being this dual thing really drove me crazy because even my friends had to think I was British. I mean, this was the deal I made with the Gordon right. McClendon organization that I wouldn't let anybody know I wasn't British. And the station was KILT, so I came up with the slogan, James Bond, Agent 008, with a license to kilt. Anyway, that's my uh, enough about me and my so, history. So, how'd you get on the the Astrodome? Uh, oh, the, oh, we were going for AstroTurf, weren't we? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dee Dee Hoffines, who was the daughter of Judge Roy Hoffines, who owned the Astros and owned the Astrodome, um, said we're having a little gathering at the Astrodome. Would you like to come? And I said, sure. She said, I'll put your name on the list. And I go there. And what they're do what they were doing is they said, see, they had a problem. Because they built this dome and they built it with skylights up above. But they were on this grid. And so when the ball went up into the air, they couldn't see it to catch it. it would, they would just be in this maze of lattice work and so on. It was very hard to see. So they had to solve that problem. So they, they painted over the windows on the top of the Astrodome. They covered them. That solved the problem, but it caused a, caused another problem. The grass died. Yeah, yeah. So they went over to Monsanto and said, have you got an answer for this? He said, well, we got this thing we're working on called AstroTurf, or it was something turf. And they said, well, but if you call it AstroTurf, we'll put it in here. And it was the first place to ever have an artificial field. So, uh, And it, it, I remember it. It was kind of like walking on a very hard rug. Yeah. <laughs> you know. But they had to have special cleats for it, all of that, you know. Lost a lot of knees, a lot of ball players. But the reason was the, the Astrodome. And the reason they built the Astrodome was because it gets so unrelentingly hot in Houston, Texas during the summer and humid. And, of course, baseball is a summer game that they, by having a, a dome stadium, uh, it was very comfortable to watch baseball. So that was so that was that. Hey, let's get down to stuff. Come on, you're the political of the world. You're, you're the political guy. Is there any news out there? Uh, <laughs> the the Mueller report as big a disappointment as Y2K. Yes, Comet <laughs> Kohutek, uh, Al Al Capone's vault. Right, Howard the Duck. Yep. Uh, Michael Jordan's baseball career. 
See? I could go on. Yeah, you could go on and on. Um, yeah, we were all, I, I kind of described it as the next day after this happened, after it went down, uh, I kind of felt uh, like it was the day after the last election. It kind of had that same dreary quality to it. Oh, my God, he's still president, you know. Um, I, I kind of felt that there maybe wasn't going to be any indictment of him directly. But it sure made me kind of mad that, uh, that you know, they allowed uh, Bill, uh, William, is it Bill Barr, um, to uh, state his opinion of what the rest of it meant. Right, a four-page summary of a thousand-page, maybe more. Yeah, we don't know how long the report is. Yeah, uh, tell it. And and if supposedly Apparently he read the whole thing, all twenty-eight hundred pages. He read the whole thing and summarized it in forty-eight hours. Yeah. Well, he also supposedly he got the word from Mueller that he was he he wasn't he was pretty sure on the rest of the counts. But as far as, uh, you know, uh, obstruction of justice, he just, he couldn't find the proof that there was, but he couldn't find the proof that there wasn't. Okay. Yeah. He and said this does not exonerate him. This does not exonerate him. So it was up to Barr to decide whether he would be exonerated. And Barr, of course, is Trump's guy. So he just said, well, we're not, you know, it's not obstruction of justice either. That's my decision to make. Okay, but uh, it, it, that part of it is still very murky, you know, about obstruction of justice. But you know, my feeling the whole is thing is murky. I mean, they had what? They had five hundred. Uh, I got it here. I got it here because they wrote it. Uh, shut up! Uh, come on, uh, damn computer. Yeah. Uh, there were uh, six hundred seventy-five days. Nineteen lawyers. 40 FBI agents, 500 search warrants, 2,800 subpoenas, 13 requests to foreign governments for evidence. And that was that was what they got, really? I could have gotten more. Yeah, I, I could have gotten more just reading the newspaper. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I find it, I mean, you know, what it was is Mueller, I think, felt that he had to have irrefutable proof that some things had happened and it was still too murky to find him guilty on or uh, that they were involved in the in the in the election that way okay so that's all I'm saying you know um, but I, I I don't know I mean I, I I don't know how you feel about it but you know I was very I was dis, I, I was disappointed obviously I huh I, I can't think about it I can't I it, yeah, I'm gonna punt to the Southern District of New York. Yeah, yeah. Who who they can find something. Who yesterday decided rather than go after Trump, they went after Michael Avenatti. Yeah, didn't that sound suspicious? Suddenly, all Trump's enemies are being rounded up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. That that was the Eighth District District Court, and then another court out in L.A. with a separate charge of wire fraud. So I don't think. It had to do with the president saying, now go get him. But what got me today, and, and, and this is uh, uh, interesting, the White House is asking for an investigation into the investigation. <laughs> In other words, they want another special counsel to look at the investigation of the special counsel. And if, if that if he doesn't get the result that he wants from that, he'll investigate an investigator to investigate the investigative investigation. Exactly, and and but that also investigatively also that the White House wants to get even. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. He wants to get even, and that's that's okay. I understand that because he's a vindictive little piece of shit. No, if you try to kill the king, make sure you, you're successful. You don't you don't take a shot at the king and then walk away. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, you kill the king. Yeah. So you got to kill the king. But the, f the fact is that he he wants to go after these people. And my feeling is, I it, I seem to remember like when Clinton when they went after impeachment on Clinton and all of that and special counsel the whole thing. Okay, 
that when it was all over, Clinton said, okay, now let's just all get together and let's get on and, you know, move this country forward. You didn't hear that from Trump. There was nothing like, uh, it was rather, oh, these people were out to get me and blah, 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 rather than, okay, it's all over now. Let's move ahead with the business of the country and let me allow me to try and get the business done. That would have been the speech to give, but he didn't. Because he's the Oval Office Oompa Loompa. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 well, he has no class. That's for damn sure, you know. Yeah. Uh, and 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 his and it, this whole thing has been striving to make sure to rub it in the noses of that New York uh, establishment that that the Manhattan establishment that never accepted the the kid from Queens. He always felt like he had been miffed and rebuffed and and he wasn't part of the the cool kids. And now he's going to stick it. Uh, the cool kids stick their face in the mud. Yeah. However, he can. Yeah, and um, uh, I think that this would be a time for him to do a rallying speech, you know, and say, "Let's now all move forward the, with the business of the country, and let me do that my can, job." You know, that but that's what he should do. You know, that that's the perfect position. Now, where did where should the Democrats be? I think they should just lay off this whole thing, not have any false hopes they're going to find something in the Mueller report. And just move on and talk about the business of what the Democrats want to do if they take over, you know. I think they should get his tax returns. <laughs> you think they should still keep going after him? Yeah, just like the Republicans kept going after Benghazi. Remember that? How many hearings were held on Benghazi? Do you remember? Uh, uh, thousands over fifty. Over 50? fifty hearings. Over fifty hearings on Benghazi, so you just keep it in the in the public and let the public know, huh. and don't don't get cowed when they say, "Oh, oh, you can't, uh, you, you won't give it up." So what? I can't just, remember the, who the uh, who the uh, ambassador was who went to Benghazi, and then was killed. I'm trying to remember his name now, but they never brought up a big part of that whole story is that he was told by the United States government not to go to Benghazi, that it was a dangerous they thing. Protect him there, yeah. They couldn't protect him there, but he went anyway. So what are you blaming Hillary for? Blame him. He's responsible for the death of what the other four people that were with him were three people. I can't remember how many the number was. Yeah, yeah. It was, I think it was three. I yeah. think it was Four died. Yeah. yeah, I mean, he he was told not to go. He was told it was a bad idea, but he went anyway. You know. So uh, you follow the the GOP template. You just uh, uh, bang, bang, bang. Just yeah. keep it going. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, I've lived longer than you have, and I've lived longer than most people listening to this broadcast are uh, have lived. And uh, in my time, people say, well, gee, is, is, this is the worst it's ever been, right? And I say, not really. You know, it's the worst president we've ever had. I mean, let's face it. I don't care if this thing vindicated him, if he was the, if, if it said you didn't do anything, he's still a fucking prick. He's still an asshole. He does not comport himself as a president should comport himself. All right? So that being said... The fact of the matter is, have I ever seen it worse? And I got to say that when I went through the 50s with the House on American Activities Subcommittee, I think that was worse. I think that was actually terrible. I mean, if we ever lost our uh, sense of being an American, it was during that period of time. You know, this is just a gaffe and a guy running the country who is taking us to ruin. But this isn't the kind of erosion of our moral fiber in this in this country that it was back then. We still have an erosion of our moral fiber now. <laughs> you know, I would rather not be an American. I would rather be from some other country uh, because I, I just think Americans have turned into horrible people in the eyes of the world and in my eyes. But back then, the 50s were pretty terrible. It was 
pretty damn ugly. I mean, when you bring somebody up in front of a committee, say, are you now or have you ever been a member of the Communist Party? And if you say you refuse to testify because you don't think it's their right to ask, all of a sudden the next day you don't have a job anymore and you don't work for the next 10 years. Now, that was pretty terrible. You know, you compare that to what we have today. Sure, today is terrible because you didn't live back then. But post-war United States was terrible. Just terrible. Uh, so, uh, you know, I don't know. Pretty much the whole world. And also, uh, the 20th century was fucked. I mean, the First World War mm-hmm. was five years, 1914, 1918. Mm-hmm. And then 20 years later, you know, the Second World War. The Second World War. Years. By the way, the First World War, when it was happening, was never known as the First World War. It was the Great War. It was the Great War because there was no Second World War. No, now so we they called didn't it. Have to say, yeah. they didn't, we didn't have to start numbering them. Right, they would just be great or terrific or wonderful or uh, <laughs> great war, unbelievable, you know. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, no, uh, and and we when we went when we went to war in World War Two, we went with a pretty moral purpose, okay, more so than World War One certainly more so than the Korean War and even more so than the Vietnam War. What happened after World War II, we felt that we did a wonderful thing. And then we felt like, hey, let's go pick some more wars and do a wonderful thing. And we had this image of ourselves that quickly got eroded by going into wars we shouldn't be going into. So, Two in a row. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, when I was growing up, it wasn't the greatest time you could think of, you know. And then when you go to the Vietnam War period, that was even worse. So today is a different kind of horrible, you know, and deplorable. And uh, it is deplorable. The man is deplorable. I mean, he's just a fucking piece of shit. Is that, I never thought I'd say that about a president, I, you know, because oh. the president was always this kind of, leader we had even nixon i called him tricky dick but that was about it i didn't call him a piece of shit well we hadn't had this uh this template for ourselves before yeah yeah hey so uh anyway so there's that and oh uh, jesse small jesse smollett just got off they i don't understand dropped the charges against him i don't understand that i don't understand it either but he lied he lied to the cops i think what happened here Remember that speech the chief of police or whatever of Chicago Uh, Chicago. gave saying how guilty he was? I think that played into it. I think they said, we can go after you on that, you know, and they just wanted to get out of the way of being called racist and all of that, and so they just settled, you know. There's no no, uh, community service time. There's no uh, probation or anything like that. He's off. He's just exonerated. He, he didn't wasn't charged, right? So he didn't have to plead to anything. He right. didn't have to, yeah. Right. So it's it, that 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 was kind of an interesting. So let's see if his place. career stalls or dives or shoots. Well, you know? we'll, we'll see what happens. Hey, well, listen. Right. As always, our time has run out, and as always, this has been just a wonderful time spent with you, Will Durst, because I I really and enjoy you, it. Alex Bennett. I learned so much. Well, and you learned I, so I, much. A little brief time together every three weeks. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, thanks for having me, and I uh, hope we get to do it again. Ladies and gentlemen from San Francisco, California, show them out the window. Show them out the window. Yeah. It's nice today. From oh. From San Francisco, California. There we are. There's our final shot of the day. Ladies and gentlemen, Will Durst. Thank you, Will. Thank you, Alex Bennett. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gabby, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey, everybody, and welcome back. Uh, I'm Alex Bennett, and this is, of course, uh, the, uh, the Ramble. And uh, let me uh, get rid of my audio thing there. I've got a, I've got, I've got a, some, uh, some problems with my sound tonight. I've been trying to, uh, I don't know why it was, uh, uh, why it was so iffy uh, during the interview. It sounded kind of bad, but I don't know. It may not have sounded bad to you. So that, that's all that matters. Let me see here. Let me open up the Skype lines uh, so that we can talk to the people out there. Uh, okay, I go online, and there we go. Uh, Skype is still being good to us, um, and uh, 
uh, I'm ready and waiting for your calls. Uh, let me see here. I got to uh, let me just uh, do a little a little tweaking of my sound so that I sound good. Do I sound okay, everybody? I guess I do. I guess I'm sounding fine. And um, let me see here what what we're going to do with the uh, citizen panel so they sound good. Okay. All righty. Wait a minute. Hold on. Okay. All right. So start uh, start calling. Um, there are, I suppose, some things to talk about. Hey, first off is uh, Charlie Wallace is calling. Uh, let me see if we... Yep. Uh, oh, gee, we, we already have a picture on him, too. Hello, Charlie. How are you? Hi, Alex. Yeah. What's new? Uh, well, <laughs> the Trump... Uh, I mean, the Mueller report's out. Yeah. Although we okay, well, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll get to that in a while. Uh, also uh, joining us tonight uh, from uh, California is Phil Meyer. Hello, Phil. How are you? Hey, I'm just fine. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're uh, on YouTube. The interview with, uh, uh, what's his name, Will Durst, was on earlier today. Yes, I put it up on YouTube. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. Because I wanted to, I wanted to show uh, Will how it works. Oh, okay. So that he could then maybe put it on a page he has or something like that. So I see. I put it up early. So all right. So I, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, Ronnie's is also for tomorrow. Uh, preview. The one with Ronnie tomorrow is up there right now too. I noticed that it, it went into that one yeah. after uh, uh, after the Will Durst and, one. And we do that with her. Uh, you know, we are uh, uh, we always run her. Uh, as soon as I do her interview, I put it up. Okay, right. So uh, that's how that works. Uh, yeah. Well, the, your interview started with talking about funerals, and uh, I guess because of the Mueller report, you actually feel like you've gone to another one. Uh, uh, no, I don't feel like anything uh, like that. No, I'm I'm delighted. Oh, good. Yeah. So um, now that Trump has been cleared of any collusion, he hasn't been cleared. Oh, the, you, you're interrupting. I didn't finish. I said of any collusion. And oh, no okay. charges will be brought for obstruction. Uh, and, you know, uh, eventually I guess they're going to release the report. But for some reason, there's some new legislation uh, that came out after uh, some other special prosecutor report uh, that uh, it would be summarized and, and, and that they would... Uh, redact certain information and grand jury information couldn't be included. America doesn't need the cliff notes. Why not? We want to read the book. Well, uh, most of America doesn't read the book. Most of America. Well, that doesn't mean headline. anything. It's still uh, there are some Americans who want to read the book. Yes, Charlie. Um, also, it was a very narrow ruling. He was, he was um, found that they couldn't prove any collusion during the campaign said nothing it didn't even cover anything before the campaign I, I didn't, started I didn't, I didn't or after hear, I didn't hear that started. I didn't hear that but what I did hear was that they couldn't come to a conclusion on obstruction one way or another they couldn't prove or disprove and basically in this country that means you didn't do it Jesse Smollett gets to pay ten thousand dollars pick up some garbage on the freeway and he gets he off didn't pick up garbage on the freeway yeah, they're no, uh, didn't. having him. No, uh, no, do some no, community no, service. no. Gee, you never listen to the news, do you? No, he What's his did. community service? It's already been. He, they claim that because of his service to the community already, yeah. that that has been satisfied. Wow, that just proves that anything. if you got money, you no, can that drive. proves that you don't listen to anything, Phil. No, no, no. But you know, it, it also proves that uh, that there's no there's no justice. Yep, that's but right. That's, well, that's okay. Uh, well, okay. Uh, so, what's the difference between the Jesse Smollett case and Donald Trump's case? Donald Trump was innocent, and no, so was Jesse no. Smollett. Oh, you just don't want to believe no. it. It's uh, no, they it's didn't say that. They didn't yet. say that. They, they didn't say that. You, guys, you know, you know who said that. You know, women. You know who said that. His what? his dick sucking attorney general. OK, yeah, he interpreted. No, he interpreted the William second Barr part. Will you listen to me, a, Phil? He he interpreted the second part. I, I gave his interpretation of the second part of the investigation in which Mueller said job. that he didn't come up with a 
uh, with with the ability to find him guilty of obstruction of justice, but then again, that was not to imply uh, absolution. Okay. Yeah. So that was not. It's his job to no, come no, up no, 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 no. In the hands of another di- attorney general, he might have actually said, uh, "Well, we should look into the president now for obstruction of justice." Okay, so if the queen had balls, she'd be king. You know, I, this is the attorney general. We Listen, got. This doesn't mean uh, this doesn't mean much to me, Phil. And no, quite frankly, frank, quite frankly, uh, he is still one of the worst human beings on planet Earth. Yeah. But okay. Don't you Wait a minute. Hold on a second. He's a terrible, terrible human being, and well, he's I'm not sure the kind of person who should be fact. president of the United States. I, I am. I am sure that no one here thinks that they rush to judgment. You know, hey, when the Mueller, you know, you well, you know, I don't hear, I don't hear Mueller. All of a sudden, Mueller, him. all of a sudden, Mueller's a wonderful guy to Trump after he's been savaging him for the better part of two years. Yeah. And plus, yeah. what you have in Donald Trump no, is a vindictive, listen to me, listen to me, Phil, media. listen to me. No, what you have in no. Trump is a vindictive human being who today could only think about getting even. When uh, most people who were, pre- I, I, wait a minute, most people, a, you listen to me, Phil, Phil, Phil let me finish. Yeah. Most people in this kind of situation, okay, in the past, the Clintons who, who were in that situation, uh, Reagan with uh, with uh, Ron Contra, several other people, presidents who have been in somewhat uh, same thing and been investigated, Clinton and so on, always after it was over, said the same thing. This has now been settled. It's behind us. Let's move forward. That's what did this president say? His, his first thing was he wants to investigate the investigation. Come on. No, no, what you do uh, is you say Graham is you say, tell the country we go we go we go to we go uh, uh, we go to the we stop fighting about this and we move forward. Thank you very much for the. Well, uh, uh, does that mean you're raising a white flag? No, I'm saying that he should. Try to bring the country together, not keep them driven apart, which he's doing because he's a sleazy no, fucking moron human being. Apart. The Russians drove him apart, and the Democrats and the news media have been conned by mm-hmm. the Russians, mm-hmm. Facebook and mm-hmm. Instagram. Mm-hmm. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. that's that's where he got this bad reputation, mm-hmm. uh, because who's the empty vessel here? It's not Trump. It's Trump it's the is a he, he still is a lousy fucking human being. It has nothing to do with the fact that it he's has president. it has a lot to do with the fact that he's president. He's not the kind of person that I want to see being president, and I don't accept him as my president. Then don't vote for him. I never but did, right and I never will. But I don't think he's qualified to run for president. He is his vindictiveness in the face of this thing of of being found not guilty of something. Yeah. Okay, is amazing. Is Two just years amazing. The guy was put through hell. Oh yeah, he was, was put no through hell. I, yeah, he was put through fucking hell. Put up. With yeah, he what was. The news he media was, put, was doing to he, him. He's been put through hell. Oh, yeah, the, I feel so look, sorry for fucking Donald Trump. Uh, a privileged, MSNBC. a privileged human being in America who comes from a privileged family, never had to earn money a day in his life, and Please and you're us. and I'm supposed to feel sorry for him because he was president and some people criticized I'm him. The guy He's a fucking a baby, Phil. He's a fucking baby. He's a and fucking he baby who, who you know what. The people that who was too cowardly, who was too cowardly to, to even past. serve in the military. <laughs> it, it doesn't matter. What do you mean it does matter? It all matters, Phil. You got out of it. Well, what does matter to you? What matters to me is that people don't rush to judgment and crucify people when they don't know all the facts. And the facts that are presented now by the Mueller report is that they're not indicting him for anything. No, 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 no. That's not what the Mueller report said. The Mueller report. No, the Mueller report found that he he and his campaign did not collude with the Russians to throw the election on the question on the question of obstruction of justice. Mueller said he hadn't didn't have enough information to make a determination on that, but that should not be looked at as being innocent or being or absolving him of the uh, the, the ability to have uh, obstructed justice. If 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 he's not going to prosecute, 
And it's, no, it's, that's it, the attorney no, general, and the attorney general gets his dick sucked by Trump. There is no dick sucking. By the way, you wanted, if you wanted to see Trump. the biggest dick sucking I've ever seen in my life, Are you familiar it with was Netanyahu that? with Trump yesterday in the Oval yeah. Office. If I was waiting for Netanyahu that's to get on job. his knees and start blowing him. That's his job. You know, you're obsessed with blowjobs, but uh, his blow job jobs is are to good. Be the attorney general. What? His job's to be the attorney general, and he has certain uh, uh, paths that he must follow. Did you see that? Uh, Did you see that horrible? Anybody see that horrible thing in the Oval Office yesterday with uh, with uh, Netanyahu, or not in the Oval Office with in the with the press corps yesterday with Netanyahu? Oh, wasn't that the biggest dick sucking you've ever seen? In your You're life, obsessed with this dip, dick sucking. Yes, I uh, am. I am. Uh, hello, Tony. Hi. Yes. Oh, I got something good to tell okay, you. Okay, well, wait a minute. Let me first go to Charlie. Oh, yeah, yeah, hand yeah. Find a little Charlie's bit. guy's hand. If the Mueller report really exonerated Donald Trump, he would be happy to release it. He and he's not releasing it. it. He said he'd release it if, uh, if uh, you know, they could release it. They, yeah, yeah, what yeah, is yeah, it, 2,800 Yeah, but wait a minute. Pages? He can say if that he, really he can act, him, he can he act, he can him. act as magnanimous. He, Phil, he, Phil, he, Phil, he, Phil, he, Phil, he can act as magnanimous as he wants to about that. But the fact is, he has in his control the man who can release it. And if that man says he no, can, he, he can he, declassify things, but this is different. And I believe that they have to redact certain things that would put uh, people in jeopardy in foreign countries. No, that's that not what it's agents. no, that's not what it's all about at all. There's yes. nothing in there that could hurt up people. They're going to release country. it, huh? He didn't say he wouldn't release it. No. Everybody says he, they're going to release he, it. No, he he acts like it's okay with him if they release it. But the guy well, who's got to make the decision is Bill Barr. And Bill that's Barr true. is that, in his pocket, so he knows that he can no, publicly no, no, act no, like no. he's a Bill good guy. Bill Barr is a stand-up guy. Oh, he's an asshole. Right. He's a fucking moron. Yeah, well... <laughs> They're all I, fucking I'm, I'm morons, glad, Phil. You know, I hope they all if, if rot he in hell. Suck dick I hope they all rot in hell. Okay? <laughs> no, I'm yeah. serious, Phil. Well, I hope they all something. rot in hell for what but they've done to this country. After two years, in the yeah, last, since years. since Trump was elected, mm -hmm. their MSNBC has had over four thousand uh, 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 claims of collusion between Trump and the Russians. Now, uh, at Fox News, I think there was a thousand. CNN, there was a thousand. So uh, basically, uh, with MSNBC, there was 15 reports a day. Let me ask you a question, Phil. Phil, you Phil, had, Phil, let me ask you a question. If he mm -hmm. didn't collude with the Russians, why was it reported that he was very worried over the last weekend before the yes. report came out? What was he worried about if he was innocent? Okay, if you went to court on your apartment and you were sitting in front of the judge and everybody was arguing their case, even though you feel you have a really good my case, apartment has nothing to do with it. My apartment has nothing to do with it. No, no, no. What I'm, what I'm uh, saying no, is I'm, everybody I'm not, gets I'm, worried. I'm not worried. I want to get some kind of settlement because... Uh, I know that we're going to do okay. I have no I no fear. This is just an example. No, it's a bad example, a Phil. It's a bad example. It's a bad example, Phil. It's a bad example. 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 It's a bad example, Phil. It's a bad example, Phil. It's a bad example. Okay. Well, Avenatti. He's oh no! Now we're not going to bring up Avenatti. Hey, you know that—that's—that's that's your Jesus Christ right there. That—that's your uh, you my know, Jesus hey, Christ. He wants to run for president. Isn't but, you know, this is this is the guy that's accusing Trump, Avenatti, the guy that's holding up for twenty-five million uh, Nike. <laughs> You know, and, and wants. Well, most have you seen himself. his? Have you seen his reply? Parables. Have you seen his whole reply to the Nike charge? Yeah, he denied. No, Mark no, Parables. no, no. He didn't, Phil. What did he say? Uh, he said that he will prove that. No, he, he didn't say that at all, Phil. Yes, he did. No, I you didn't. It. I've got it right here. Okay, read he, it. Huh? Read it. This is this is this is this is the guy that's that's accusing Trump and marching the hook uh, the dancers up in front of him. Listen, that doesn't mean he didn't fuck Stormy Daniels and cheat on uh, his wife. He did. I'd fuck her. You know, even though she's not my type. I wouldn't fuck her. Uh in, uh, uh, What's uh, the real Avenatti claimed that Nike has funneled large sums of money 
to elite student athletes bound for top colleges. Uh, he added that cor that corruption reaches the highest levels of Nike and cryptically referred to receipts that are as clear as day. The report adds that Avenatti did not produce evidence or detail just what he thinks the company has done wrong. Avenatti's tweet storm came this morning after he was arrested. Basically, he's simply saying he, he was just making the allegations against Nike that he was going to make anyway. Yeah, well, even if the allegations are true, and they probably are, his job is to represent his client who had been injured. It wasn't no, to I mean, that's another. That, wait a minute, that's another case entirely, Phil. It wasn't to black. It's another it's case entirely, Phil. It's another York. case entirely. Yeah. There are two the, cases. The one in New York. Do, yeah. Is is has to do with Nike mm -hmm. and and uh, and they have on tape the guy uh, trying to extort uh, money from Nike. We for don't himself. know. We one haven't heard. We haven't. We haven't heard. We haven't heard. Twenty-two million. For we him. haven't. We haven't heard the tapes. We haven't heard what he what, well, what the content. So you're not going to just. You're I'm not. not uh, judge, you know something. Wait a minute. Judgment. Wait a minute, asshole. You're sitting there having <laughs> accused me at the beginning of the program of going after an innocent man. Yes. But he was proven innocent, and you're doing that with Michael no, Avenatti. No, I'm no you're doing you're that with Mike. You're, you're not presuming you're innocence. Rushed, Are, do you you okay, hold on a second. Trump. Do you presume that Michael Avenatti is innocent? Yes. Okay, then shut the fuck up. No, but. You rushed to judgment on Trump, but you won't rush to judgment on Michael Avenatti. I didn't rush to judgment on Trump. I never did that on this program. If you go you, back you, and you listen to this program, I I did, never once said I, I you know I said it smells like he did it, but I'm not going to say he did it till we find out. We don't know. You hoped he did it. Oh, I hoped he did it. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> and yeah. and and so did the media, but the media promoted uh, uh, this hysteria. And now it's, uh, you know, what's, what's come of it is absolutely nothing. There, there's not going to be an impeachment. And chances are there won't be anything. There never was in, going you know, to be an impeachment, in the New York There was district. never going to be an impeachment, Phil. Well, because Pelosi found out uh, about what was in the moment. No, report she didn't. No, she earlier. didn't. No, she didn't. Yes, she was briefed. No, she didn't. I heard it on No, the she didn't. I know you. What news? They breathed. See, uh, it was either CNN or CBS. No, she did not hear about it ahead of time. She made a decision that the Democratic Party would n would not do the Democratic Party good to take a position of impeachment against Trump because it makes him the uh, the you know makes him a pitiful and, character. Right, and to continue to go after Trump mm -hmm. will weaken their position That's and correct. do the same thing That's that happened correct. to the Republicans right. when they went after Clinton. Then what happens now you mean Hillary, is that they, when they went after Hillary with Benghazi no, no, hearings. No, no, it was uh, the uh, Clinton dick sucking thing. How many Benghazi <laughs> hearings were there? There uh, were there were fifty, 50. Over, over fifty. Yeah, and every one of them couldn't find anything again, but they kept doing it over and over and over and over again. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the two, you know, uh, does doing the same thing over and over, uh, but expecting a different result, make you not crazy? We've, we've been joined now by uh, Jack Bishop. Are you there, Jack? Hey, I'm right here. Before my voice uh, goes up five octaves, I'm under. Oh, do, wait a minute. Do, do you have a cam? Do you have a camera there? <laughs> no, he's on. Hello. A phone. Oh, do you have a camera? Yeah, you on a phone? No, you I'm not. A, no, no, no. I'm on a phone. Oh, okay. I, I, All right. Look, uh, fellas. All we're talking about is political theater. All of all we have seen for the last two years with the investigation of Trump has been some form of political theater played rather badly yeah. by the Democrats. Yeah. Now let's quit whining. Let's accept the fact that that's what we that is the new paradigm in American politics. Let's get bloody with one another. Let's enjoy these fights. Let's look at it as the WWE or F or whatever they call, you know, uh, uh, exhibition wrestling these days. Let's root for our teams and let's have a beer. Let the adults who want to show up and do something, let them run the country. Yeah, Phil, don't show pictures now. You're just, you're just, you're just. Uh, it's bloody. No, you, I, you, Phil, put it away. Put it away. Okay. That's distracting. Um, yeah. And, and besides, Jack couldn't see it. He's on the phone. Yeah. 
Well, I don't know that it was just political theater, Jack. I don't know that I agree with you on that. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Jeff. I think a whole bunch of people uh, either have been arrested or are going to prison yeah. or pretty much going to go to prison. Yeah, I mean, those guys. What are they going to prison? They, they obviously did something. Yeah, they. A they, lot uh, of talking to. They us. were crooks. They, they were crooks. They didn't pay Who their taxes. Them? They lied on banks, uh, bank applications. They also lied to Congress about Trump yeah. and their dealings with Trump. N no, what they lied is, for Trump before Congress. You know how that they happens. lied for Trump before Congress. That's that's one, one of the Trump, big one of the big charges wrong. against Michael Cohn is that he lied to Congress. And what did he lie to My, Congress about? They weren't asking him about his taxes. Yeah, well, obviously that's he what he lied. He lied about Trump. Uh, he got misinformation. He lied Trump about Trump. In writing, he lied about writing, Trump. Trump's answers. He lied the about Trump. You're not listening to me, Phil. He lied about Trump. That was one of the so, things that he, they found him guilty of. He and Avenatti are from the same ilk. Oh, jeez. Well, what you know? ilk is Trump? Or well, what? What ilk is their boss from? They, you know, they, well, yeah. they come from the lawyer ilk, you know. You know what they say about uh, two hundred lawyers on the bottom of the ocean. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. We know and, those old jokes. And to guys like you, Phil, I say, when you got legal problems, who you gonna call? Uh, be right? Good, better call dancer. Saul. <laughs> no, I mean seriously, seriously. When you've got legal issues, who are you gonna call? You personally. Well, Look who's well, here! By, call a by the way, by the way, let me let me recognize that uh, Brian is here. Hello, Brian. You want in on this? Uh, uh, you want in on this wrestling match? Of course. Yeah. You can hear me. Yeah, I can hear driving you. Driving a different vehicle. Yeah. Yeah, I'm in a 26 foot box truck, but I'm on standby. So, in other words, I'm on call. So, uh, but yeah, like I told Tony when he messaged me on Facebook, yeah. I'll, Make it a point to call into this program because I I can uh, I can give you until almost two o'clock anyhow in the morning. So yeah, yeah. So uh, anyway, what what you're thinking on all of this? You're never one to hedge your words. Yeah. Mine. Yeah. Uh, well, like uh, like Jeff Stein said, there's a reason why all these people are going to prison, and there's or why these people are being indicted. And as uh, it was not just Jeff who said this, but it was someone else who jumped in. It might have been Tony here. Um, who hired him? Who hired these people? Who vetted these people? Mm -hmm. It was the Trump administration, and it ultimately falls back on Trump. But, of course, he's being the whiny cocksucker that he is. will never admit that uh, he, 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 he's culpable in at least hiring these crooks. Not the least of which to say that he himself is one himself, but uh, that beside the point that he's incompetent. So, um, uh -huh. you know, that goes... It was Chris Christie. It was Chris Christie that was in charge of vetting uh, and and hiring many of the people for the Trump campaign. And these some and, of these yeah. people were people who were working for him long before the election. Yeah, yeah. doing business dealing. The only one he probably, you know, uh, I would say that Chris Christie probably, if he did anything, maybe. Uh, uh, he certainly didn't hire Cohn. Cohn was it was no. Trump's lawyer was for there. ten years. Mark Garagos was let go from uh, was it CNN oh, God. Uh, yeah. as a contributor, and yeah. Mark Garagos was an attorney that was a partner with uh, Avenatti. No, he wasn't and, a partner with Avenatti. And, and, yeah, and no, on this Nike on no. this Nike deal, he and, they say uh, he he was he co conspired with him, but they didn't right. charge him. They didn't charge him. Well, then why did CNN let him go? Because CNN are a bunch of fucking assholes because anytime somebody sneezes wrong, they get rid of them. They don't like any controversy. You know, you talk about somebody being innocent until uh, guilty, uh, innocent until proven guilty. There's a case of somebody being considered guilty until proven innocent. Yeah, but supposedly there are. And by the way, Garagos had a good win today. He got Jesse Smollett out of jail and out of those well, charges. They are a private mm -hmm. company. CNN is a private corporation. I'm not like I don't have any love for CNN, by the way, Alex. Yeah. But uh, 
uh, CNN, it's just like Facebook, it's a private organization. And like, unfortunately, most organizations, especially even the news media outlets organizations, of which I include Facebook, yeah, it is indicative that you are guilty until proven innocent of most things because they can do that to you. Yeah. Unfortunately. That's how but shit yeah, they, they can do that yeah. to you. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, um, uh, but it, it, uh, Garagos today uh, did very well. His client got off, you know, Jesse Smollett. Uh, yeah. he, he got off of, of that charge. They didn't proclaim his innocence, his innocence on all the charges, but they just said they were dropping the charges. Kind of got the same verdict Trump did this weekend. You know, there, there was no reason to ruin Smollett's life. He made a mistake. He's going to pay restitution. No, he's uh, not going to pay restitution. Yeah, his ten thousand dollar is a ten thousand dollar bond. They're not giving up. He's he's giving right. it up. He's letting them. Have he's it. giving it up. So uh, you know, I, people make mistakes, and obviously he's um, you know a, a little immature, and he was uh, very selfish. You know, so well, you don't know. Yeah, you don't maybe know it's okay to forgive him. No, it's we'll never know whether he did it or didn't do it because it never went to court. Yeah, we're talking uh, about now. Uh, We're talking about uh, Jesse Smollett. Yeah, there's been a lot of things in the news in the last couple of days. It's been a hot news weekend. But I thought found a great similarity between the the uh, the decision in Smollett's case and the decision in the Trump situation. Well, Trump didn't have to do community service. He should have. Alex, yes. a good friend of mine that does, does the police force, so I guess, that the uh, in a Chinatown area that they uh, apprehended him in and uh, or they, 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 they cornered him in and then he told all these stories. Yeah. yeah. That the police force there has a history of fabricating lies to the to, to media outlets. So, you know, there may have been, there may have been some mix-ups there. Well, Alex said earlier that uh, the police chief and his statements may have compromised the case. And uh, uh, he did actually. I mean, he, history of that happening in that precinct. Yeah, they should have. He should have never gotten up and and kind of indicted him publicly. Uh, that's not the job of what the police should do. And uh, that always we leave that to the media, huh? We leave that. No, to the media. St- cut it out with the media. If it's the media you like, you know, if if it's if it's Newsmax and if it's Fox and if it's uh, any any talk show in America, practically, they're okay. They're not fake news. But anybody who tries to tell the truth is fake news. Well, you know, I, I believe the John Birch Society. <laughs> well, the John Birch Society are anti-Semitic. I don't know why. No, they're they not. are. Yes, they are. Seventy years ago, they promoted a book. Uh, yes, the elders, Zion. the protocols of the elders of Zion. Yes, I know the book well. Yeah, but that book. Have you ever read it, it Phil? Had been take, was taken down. They didn't promote it oh, anymore. Oh yeah, and but they, know, was, but they did. They were an anti-Semitic organization, and they still are. There are people. Go ahead, be a Shonda else. for the Goyim. I don't care. <laughs> There's people Goyim. all else. I know. I know plenty of people, including a lot of Jews, Orthodox Jews, that are members of the JBS. Mm-hmm. Well, Phil, you're always going to find some people that are authoritarians. Uh, how, and, how does you know, that make them authoritarians? Well, if you look at uh, what the Birch Society is really about. Oh, really? Okay. They are authoritarian leaning, no doubt well, about they're it. They're constitutionalists. Okay. You use that term, I use authoritarian. We can agree that we disagree. No. They, well, how do you feel but about the fact wrong. that they accused Dwight no, Eisenhower? No, no, you're wrong. Phil. How do you? By wh- my rules, you are wrong, and tonight we're playing by my rules. Oh, get off my lawn! <laughs> well, hey, if, you know, considering the fact that where you live, I saw a story over the weekend. How many of you good conservatives are leaving the San Francisco Bay Area there because you? There aren't any conservatives in the San Francisco Bay Area. <laughs> well, not according to the article that I read. Well, I've never not met according one. To, well, that's because you don't ever go out. Yeah. Actually, I, I have. I mean, what was, the last, what was the last time that you went to a meeting of people of like minds to your own? Like minds to my own. Last night, I had cigars and gla- a couple glasses of wine with one of the listeners of the show that... Um, uh, is is conservative but doesn't call in. Uh, well, in other words, somebody that's a real wuss. Yeah, yeah. Uh, nice guy. Uh, he, he, you know, he invited me he out. Can't be. He's a, he can't uh, be. He's a conservative and like-minded. 
to you. <laughs> well, he asked me when's the last time. It was last night. You know. Well, uh, there was an article this week in one of the small San Francisco rags that uh, I get online where the uh, chairman of the San Francisco Republican Party said a number of the people that he currently knows leaving the Bay Area because they think it's, it's too liberal for their viewpoint. Now, I'm a big believer. I'm, I'm a big believer in self-deporting. Well, it, it now, is and, too and liberal I, and I, and, from and my it, viewpoint. Well, well, why don't you leave? Well, it's it's beautiful, you know. But it, why don't you leave? Well, because there's there are bastions of conservatives here and there, but they're definitely not. I mean, if you run as a Republican for any position in the state of California, you can be guaranteed a loss. Uh, there there are so well few, the same thing. The same well the same thing is true where I live. Good. Uh, now, now, you know, why don't we? Now, 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 why don't you know? That, that's why I'm for breaking the country up. But, you know, so I want to live. Hmm? So why do you live in Texas? I mean, there's nothing holding because you there. I'm a, like the because I'm a damn. Have. Because I'm a damn fool. You know, the and, if I had, and, I, and if I and, and let me finish. My folks, my parents, left the South because of Jim Crow. And my dad called it voting by U-Haul. <laughs> and I would like nothing better than to leave this part of the world. Unfortunately, my wife has a very substantial job here, and she's got a few more years that she wants to work. Mm -hmm. And when she retires, I'm going to lean on her and let's pack up our shit and get the hell out of here. Yeah. Uh, I... I'm installing what are we, flooring tomorrow we, we, in, a, in an apartment that in a decent neighborhood on Spruce Street in Laurel Heights. Uh, they're going to get $5,500 a month for this apartment. It's f f three bedrooms, a, cl a big closet under the stairs, and one bathroom at $5,500 a month. And no parking. Uh, and, you know, you look at the place. It's, it's kind of run down. This is what you got to pay. So the landlord, he said to me, well, you know, you get five guys in there paying 1700 bucks a piece. <laughs> you know, I, it, it's crazy here. It's cheaper well, to live it, in well, Tony's well, basement. Well, Phil, Phil, look, let's be honest. There are some cities in the country that are great cities to live in if you have money. Yeah. And... People are always going to want to live in San Francisco, New York, L.A., Chicago. Every year that I have been here in the Dallas area, I ask myself, why in the hell am I staying? And I came, finally came to the conclusion, I was one, I was lazy, and two, I had friends and family here, and I'm waiting for my wife to retire, and I'm going to start pushing her, honey, let's pack up and... Let's head to Seattle. That's great. You know, Seattle's a nice area. Even though I've never been there, I know it. I know it's a nice area. Brian has had his hand up, and if uh, it, pretty soon yeah. it's going to Brian gonna lose all the Brian. blood in his arm. Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Brian. Well, I just want to say, wait, wait, hold on a second. Hello, my son Brian. I miss you. Hello. Daddy wants you to come home. <laughs> I'll be there. I'll try to be there at least. So man, I don't get called into work or something. But anyway, but, uh, what did you want to say? Uh, something that deviates a little from uh, what we're talking about because it's been a while since I called in. I have listened sporadically on the uh, podcast wise, but uh, I wanted to belatedly offer my condolences to the Rockwell family. I remember him calling in this program quite frequently. Right. Um, right. As well as uh, another issue being that uh, uh, did they, uh, did Skype uh, ever get to forcing you? To Alex to uh, use the new uh, no. version yet? Or no, no. The there, there are a lot of uh, subversive people out there who have jimmy-rigged the old uh, 7 version, uh, and they don't seem to be shutting it down or able to shut it down. I don't know which, but maybe they've just given up and just said, if some people want to use it, let them use it, you know. Right. But uh, um, in fact, this thing even, I think, updated itself the other day for some reason without me even asking about it. 
uh, to a slightly yeah, higher version, yeah, and it, and it and it still works perfectly, you know. So we'll just hope that they uh, they either don't find out about this or can't figure out their way around the hack or whatever. But you know, we're still using the old Skype. You know, Maybe if I have to go to using the new Skype, I'm gonna I'm just gonna you know pack this whole thing in, you know. Uh, well. You, know, you taking your blood pressure pills? I mean, you know, I don't uh, have you pack it I don't in, have high blood you won't pressure, need Phil. I don't have huh? high, I don't have high blood pressure. You keep talking to me, you will. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> um, you know, um, but uh, Alex, you need to be like my first wife. Yeah, you need to be like Phil, my first wife said. Oh, I'll go ahead. I'm just going to say real quick, Bill, I'd rather deal with it in lieu of the last uh, three weeks or so with uh, all the bullshit I've been going with, going on with, with uh, uh, relationship-wise. I'd rather deal with a thousand of you, Bill, than <laughs> what I've been going through the last three fucking weeks. I can guarantee you. I can guarantee goddamn to you that. Well, uh, you know, I guess guys are as bad as women say they are. Oh, they fucking <laughs> are. They're worse. <laughs> That's, well, where do you think I came up with the nickname sphincter twat from? Uh, yeah. <laughs> they bleed out their ass. Because they bleed out their asshole. And by their assholes, I mean their mouth. And by the way, you've lost weight and you're looking very good. Yeah, I noticed Thank that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, you're looking good. If I were gay, I would be interested. You know. <laughs> well, he's always talking about dick sucking and, uh, you know. <laughs> no, no. I'm allowed to. Dick sucking is something women do to guys as well, you know, Phil. Of course. Uh, uh, who doesn't like who doesn't like to get their dick sucked? I don't think yeah. uh, there's very many people in this world who don't like getting their dick. No, I never heard a guy say, you know, I was going out with this woman and she started to go down on me and I had to tell her, I just don't like having my dick sucked. You never hear that in any conversation anywhere, you know. Uh, so uh, uh, and uh, uh, so, so so it's what's it's, wrong with Barr and Trump? Well, no, I think, uh, you know, nothing wrong with Barr and Trump. I hope they're happy with each other. Well, I, I think they so will. Am I. <laughs> with those tiny hands, of his, any dick to him will seem like a... Like a so so what, what did guys do to you in the last couple of weeks that's made you bitter like this? Uh, well, Brian's always bitter, but I mean more bitter than you usually are. <laughs> Just game playing, psychological game playing, projection. There's a lot of that going on. Yeah. Like I'm the... Uh, like I'm the uh, like, I'm the one with the mental illness. Like, I'm the one with borderline personality disorder. I will give you that I have antisocial personality disorder. There are at least many signs and symptoms and degrees of antisocial personality disorder. But BPD, borderline personality disorder, is something I do not have. Yeah. Additionally, I've been told that I'm too judgmental. Well, when you go around doing... When I, I understand the polyamorous lifestyle, but when you go around doing going free loving the people and rubbing yourself in sheep's blood and then diving out in the middle of the ocean and wonder why you get yourself bit by sharks. This coming from somebody who was in a four-year-long relationship uh, with uh, someone who was married, actually. And uh, uh, I come to find out, to make a long story... Wait a minute, married, when, you say, when you say married, Brian, to a, another guy or married to a woman? Another guy. Another guy. Another okay, guy. all right. Yeah. But anyway, uh, you know, based on his patterns of behavior, I've come to find out uh, even though I haven't spoken to the ex, I'd love to speak to the ex, by the way, and get his perspective. Uh, I've come to I've come to the c preliminary conclusion that the onus of that divorce was on this person, since this person has nothing but an al alcoholic and abusive father to rely on, and the other one still has an apartment and a firefighting career to fall back on. So clearly, this motherfucker is the one who uh, this sphincter twat, in other words, is the one who bears the brunt of the blame of the breakup. Yeah, and, well, you uh, see, what, what? And, I, and, I, and, I know, and I'm judgmental, okay? And I want to say to him, you know, and I want to say to other people, you know, is, there's a reason why at 37 years of age, because you know that old saying that about more than two people who are of no relation to you, if they say something about you, chances are it's true. Well, far more than two people, almost like 200 people in the course of the 12 years that I've been out of the closet have told me, or at least in the last five years, more than 20 people have told me that I look good for my age, all right? that I don't look like I'm 37. I don't look, I didn't look like I was 35. I looked like I was in my mid twenties. I looked like even, you know, I was in, I could pass for someone in my early twenties. It, it, that well, doesn't, it doesn't matter. I'm you're, like, you're still young enough that nobody has to say you have to pass for anything. Okay. The thing is, the thing is you know, there's a reason why, why, I, why I, I look the way I do because 
I made the correct judgmental decision never to have smoked a cigarette in my life. I made the correct judgmental decision never to do drugs. I made the correct judgmental decision never to never to be a drinker. And uh, you know, there are absolutes in this world. So all you hippie free love types who think that everything's relative and everything everything should be uh, and, and nobody's wrong and everybody's right to their and everyone's entitled to their own reality. Fuck you. Do you feel better now? Oh, huh? Do you feel better? Oh, Not much. Hey, Brian, this is, Brian, this is. I'm going to get some cool Alex. Yeah, yeah. 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 What, were you gonna, what were you going to say, Brian, Jim? this is Dad. Let me tell you something. Yeah. Most people your age and yeah. younger are in, screwed, are in screwed up relationships of some kind. I read an article over the weekend that said people should not even really c consider being serious with someone until they're in their mid-30s. Because you're still finding out who you are. The human brain doesn't fully mature until it's about 25. Well, this is what I get for being with somebody who was 26. Well, see, but see there? Case closed. Well, you see, I, and, I and also, all, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, this, oh, Brian, oh, yeah. 75% of American men fuck around on the side. 50% of American women do too. Black Daddy has spoken. <laughs> exactly. And you can take it to the bank. So yeah, women though. Like women don't. Cheat. Women, 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 however, <laughs> uh, uh, Jack, don't don't uh, cheat as indiscriminately as guys do. Uh, well, right. Women, no, women, that, women, right. women, women have to have. An, let, let me wait, let me finish. Probably, let me finish. Are you cheating? What I'm saying is, uh, the the, tr the trouble is that women uh, have to have some kind of emotional t attachment to somebody before having sex with them. In most cases, that's it because women also have this uh, sense of they could get pregnant and so on. They, the motherhood thing always enters into it somewhere in there. And so consequently, women are far more picky about who they sleep with than guys. The difference with guys and the difference with being gay is guys are go crazy. You know, they'll fuck anything. They'll fuck mud. Okay, uh, uh, right? Am I right? Am I saying something wrong here, uh, Brian? You know, so the relationships of guys with guys is different than guys and women and women and women. What? What were you going to say? I said I'll only fuck mud, though. Prison. It's what? My, my, hold on. My you standards just, are a little higher, though, because I'll only fuck mud if I'm in jail. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's the wall too while I'm at, or between the bars, yeah. you know, just to get that friction action going. I had a gay guy I, working you know, for me. Blowing my cock up, but, you know. I need I, to. When I when I was a flooring installer, I had this uh, gay guy working for me. He was a very nice guy, and he of course used to all gay guys are very like, nice guys. So are black people. So go ahead. Well, he was black also and gay. Some, and some of my best friends are Jewish. Yeah. 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 <laughs> But um, not in Texas. But uh, there are no Jews in Texas. Maybe just Amy. Uh, but the uh, the guy used to tell me, and this is in the 70s, uh, that he used to go to the Bass and there was a glory hole. And uh, they, they, don't, they didn't give a shit back then, you know, what they, what they did, who they sucked. And, you know, you, you know what a glory hole is? Yes. Yeah, well, uh, tell, tell the people. Uh, you stick your dick in there and somebody sucks you from the other side. Yeah. So in, in some uh, places, I mean, in some places, there are like these uh, these uh, peep shows uh, yeah. in various places. I don't know where they are. I wouldn't know where to find one. But they have peep shows where uh, you can stick your dick through the hole and there's a woman in the middle um, who's blowing people. Maybe it's a woman. Maybe. <laughs> but, you know, it doesn't really matter, Phil. Well, I'm thinking about making some memes up on Facebook. I don't. You guys know who the comedian Bill Burr is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, he does this. There's there's these uh, YouTube videos I've been watching of his his takes on things, his uh, his uh, on political issues, philosophical issues, religious issues, blah blah blah. But they have these still shots of him going like this. Yeah. <laughs> the look of disgust on his face. And I'm thinking about making some memes up with that expression. You know, have like uh, have like him. And have the word me on there, yeah. as in me. But you know, and then you, have like uh, the picture of something that he's disgusted at. So, for example, 
that picture of what he's discussing that would be me, polyamorous culture. Ugh. Yeah. Me, <laughs> organized religion. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> me, <laughs> shrinker twats. By, by, po- by polyamorous, you mean having sex with more than one person at a time. Having it, relationships with yeah, more than one yeah, person. Yeah. But they always end in failure. As I remember we were having this conversation briefly a while ago, and Phil made the remark that he's been involved in like a hetero three way relation or hetero three way arrangements in which they've ended badly. They always. They do. They do. Yeah. Well, well, no, no, no. Brian, Brian, jealous. It, somebody Brian, always gets jealous. Yeah. yeah. But, not necessarily. Not necessarily. Unless you I know. I, I know two couples. Uh, now they're not in a, in a thing together, but they are in uh, triad relationships. One of those couples has been together for fifty years. They're in their. They're in their mid to late 70s. Well, nobody's saying these things don't survive, but what we're saying is, is that in polyamorous relationships, they're much harder to maintain. Oh. Because, oh, you're, yeah. because, I, mean, because I, I always found like if I ever did a threesome, I felt like I was having to be a politician. You know, uh, oh, I don't want to pay that much attention to this person because the other person might be bothered by that. So I have to like parse it out equally. And then I'm spending so much time being political. I'm not enjoying the act of having sex with two other people. Well, well, somebody explained that to me once, Alex, and said, if you are the odd sex out, lay back and let the others just have their way well, that, but that, that, but that's not the way it works because they're well, expecting to be taken. Versus reality of reality. They're, they're, I mean, they're uh, expecting I think to be. That if you, well, wait a minute. They're they're expecting to be taken uh, care of by you as well, and you don't want to pay attention to more. Here's here's the one that's difficult. You're married, or you you have a girlfriend, and now there's another woman that enters into the situation. And it's okay with your girlfriend, but now you have to pay as much attention to your girlfriend, in spite of the fact that the new woman is the more interesting one because you've never had sex with her before. That's right. You know, so you're playing this this mental thing about I don't want my I care about my girlfriend more than I care about this other person. But this other person well, maybe, right now is far more interesting group. to me than the woman I've been fucking for the last two years, you know? Well, maybe this group is the wrong group to be talking about this. Maybe we ought to get some people on in this discussion who are in those kind of relationships. Well, I bet. I'd, like to ta- I'd, I'd like to talk to some people on uh, my show who come from traditional Mormonism. You yeah, know, I, I've known some Mormons. Well, but, you're you're you assuming know, anybody's going to call your show or my show, so they, you know, well, let's not let's well, not yeah, start dreaming you know, yet. <laughs> I mean, that's wishful thinking. I grant you, but uh, listen, I, I can top all. I can just, top all of you. I mean, I had I had a threesome with a woman who brought her sister by, mm-hmm. <laughs> and we had a threesome. Uh, what, that what, was Jack? that was unusual because both the vaginas looked alike. Him? What? Uh, Jack should just call any any number in Utah, and maybe he'll happen on a Mormon. And I want to. Uh, well, no, you got to call certain. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Utah. Brian. Southern Brian, Utah, one. Brian, you're more likely to find folks that uh, right. still uh, have uh, poly arrangements. Brian has something I he say wants something to say before I forget this, because I'm trying to remember, and I, I remember now, but I don't want to forget it again. This is why I am emphatically, you were mentioning Alex about the, being the politician and playing that bullshit game. Yeah. That is bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck that. I want legalized prostitution. I want what Nevada has nationwide including the territory. That way I would just like in pornography I pay you the money. I want I want a, th- I want a threesome. I want a foursome. I want a fucking orgy. I've got a thousand I've got a grand here I can blow. Here's your here's here's a grand. Oh, Maybe that's going to cost positive. you more than a grand. Service, for payment for services rendered. Wham bam. Thank you all. Get the fuck out of my house when we're done blowing our loads and that's it. Uh, yeah, uh, that kind of money will only get you a Richmond crack fiend. Yeah. yeah. I'm just I'm just pulling a figure out of my ass here. So I'm, you know what I mean though. Yeah, hey, yeah, but you then know, there, when, there, uh, there are those the of us who find vice. no nothing wonderful about going to a prostitute. Like I always found prostitutes, uh, I didn't enjoy the idea because I always wanted to win somebody over and go to bed with them and seduce them, not pay them pay, pay them several hundred bucks and have them yeah. you know fuck oh. me. 
At Not least just one. Win two or three people over bullshit. I mean, uh, uh, what's his name? If I want a three or four way. Get pay the money. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Get my dick sucked what? by multiple people, or get get fucked, or get get or fuck people, multiple uh, people. Uh, you, know, you know what the thing is, is that, that my friend at the Moonlight Bunny Ranch. Get the fuck out of my house. Thank you for uh, a wonderful evening. Oh, by the way, to, you know your friend Dennis Hoff. Yeah. He actually won the election. I know. After, yes. he, after he was dead. Yeah, yeah, he won the election. But anyway, um, uh, uh, he I, I, he used to always like to talk about me by saying that Alex is just the only person I ever knew who came over to the Moonlight Bunny Ranch, and I told him he could have any woman in the place if he would just pay half, because our, our take of the thing is 50%, so we would want them to get their 50%, but he could have any woman half off in the place, and he never took me up on the offer. And that was because the idea of having sex with a prostitute never intrigued me. In fact, it kind of turned me off because I, I part of my whole thing with sex was the pursual and the and the and the you know the conquest, if you will. Yes, Charlie. Uh, Brian was talking about how polyamorous relationships always end bad. Well, just for the record. All of my monogamous relationships have ended bad. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You pretty much. Don't get me started on what I feel about marriage. Well, you just polyamorous I'm one at a time. <laughs> what happens in this country is most of us wind up. Hmm? Most of us wind up in serial monogamy. One of the reasons that Donna married me, I was the only man uh, that she had ever met who uh, who was forty three years old who had only been married once before and had no children that he was given child support to. So that made me very desirous in her eyes. She was way out of my league, and I knew it. But she said, not having those uh, those extra things made you real attractive to me. Well, I, I and, uh, think that it would, you know. And, and, and like Alex, you know, I, I was with a prostitute once in my... In my only once. Yeah, in my early twenties, I was still in college, and actually, I, I like, only had sex uh, with a prostitute once. The meter in my life. was running, you know, like yeah. uh, come on and get 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 this over with. Uh, was kind of the uh, attitude of the girl in question, but I realized she wasn't there to to be pleased. She was there trying to please me, and uh, I didn't particularly care for it. And I, and, and I'd go to radio conventions and record companies would want to send some girl up to the room. I said, nah, I'm going to pass. I'm, I'm going to watch Perry Mason reruns and go to sleep. Relationships are real hard. Listen, I had, a, I, had a, I, I had a, I had a, I had a lady friend who worked at a, uh, at a brothel here in New York. And uh, she said to me one night, she said, listen, would you do me, would you like to do me a favor? And I said, what? And she said, I have this client, and he's a regular client. He comes in all the time, and next week he's bringing his wife in, and he wants to give her the same experience he gets at the brothel. I mean, it was that kind of honest relationship. Would you kind of want to do a trick with me? And I said, How much was she willing to give you? Two hundred dollars. That ain't bad for for a guy your age. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, I was going to get $200 for doing something I do for free. But I, it, what, what it was yeah. is it interested me to be put in that situation since I, I you know, I've never worked as a prostitute. So I did it, and it was eye-opening because you suddenly realize your job is not there to get off. Your job is there to get her off, and that's your only job. That's the only thing you're there for. So basically, you're working your ass off to make sure this woman is having a good time. And it doesn't matter yeah. whether you're having a good time or not. And I found it very eye-opening. You know. You're there to serve. Can I tell you, can I tell you a, a funny cop story? No. Uh, There's the, no such the thing cops, as a funny cop the story in my mind. The, the hookers in, in Richmond would joke, uh, who could get the trick cheapest? You know, they, they would bargain, you know, $5 or 50 cents or McDonald's hamburger, you know, uh, whatever it was, they would, they would, you know, try to best the, the other guy by getting it cheaper <laughs> because they were listening to this on the radio when uh, back and forth. It was uh, quite interesting. I find that kind of tasteless because these women are working for a living and you should pay them a decent wage. 
No, these were crack whores. Well, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. You're taking, and then you're taking advantage of somebody who's got a drug problem. Yeah. Hey, well, Phil, and that's hey, why Phil, I don't think them will help them. Huh? Hey, Phil. Hey, Phil, you want to know what's even funnier? Yeah, yeah they, if they're crack whores, they're still being, uh, they're still being uh, extorted by pigs. Hey, and Alan, nah. I want to take exception to something that you just said. You said you had never, uh, until that incident, been a prostitute. How long had you been in the broadcast business when you had that experience? Well, that's why I knew how to do it so well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, because let's face it, if you've been in broadcast and you've whored yourself somewhere... Yeah. Oh, uh, well, uh, I no, I, I, I never, I never felt. No, actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna disagree with you. Uh, that's that's the okay. reason why I had a, I had a slow rise to the top, because I wouldn't compromise myself. Uh, I, I never would compromise. I would never compromise the work that I did. You were at the top when you were in New York. You know, uh, you were, you know, you were regarded as. Uh, but, as the yeah. voice of the people, but I would, young I, people. Yeah, but I wouldn't compromise. Well, you know, well, and, I remember and, Alex said this to me one time. I, I, I uh, this was maybe about tw about twenty years ago, maybe even a little longer. It was that time I came to New York, mm -hmm. and you were uh, living in Riverdale. Uh, yep, and we with and Archie we and Veronica. And, yes, and, and I said, I my career has stalled. And you said to me, your problem is, is you don't have two or three ex-wives that you're having to send alimony to. And I got to thinking about that. Yeah, you know, I, I hadn't gotten married yet. I was damn near 30. And I didn't have uh, anybody to be accountable to until myself. And yeah, and I had just gotten comfortable and uh, didn't have any motivation to do any better than I was doing. Well, you know, I mean, so I want to thank you for that. But yeah, but but, but then what was my motive? What was my motivation? Because I was never paying any ex-wives money. Do professionals really need motivation? When you look at some guy that's getting twenty million dollars playing basketball, uh, you know, they're motivated, uh, mm -hmm. whether they're married or they're not married. You know, it's. The, the idea well, is, if you're a professional, you motivate yourself. I'll tell you. I'll tell you how I made it to the top. Okay. Pure, utter fucking luck. Every bit of it. If I were to go along in my career, I, every step along the way, it was just some kind of blind luck that got me to the next level. It wasn't well, because... Of, but me. you, you uh, recognized the opportunity and you took it. Even, even with blind luck, if you don't see the opportunity and then make the decision to do it, and many people don't make the decision to do it because of fear... So you didn't have the fear. You you took the chance. No, no, that wasn't it at all. Uh, no, because I, the them. opportunities I were off, was offered were opportunities that I couldn't possibly turn down. You know, when I was working in Chicago, I I said to uh, Ronnie, uh, I said, uh, you know, do we really d does it really matter? I'm working in Chicago. I'm working in the third largest market in the United States. I said, what are we going to do? Go to New York next? And the next thing I know, I get a phone call from New York. Right. You know? Well, and I wound, up, I wound up with a TV show here in the Dallas market that lasted for eight, nine years. Mm -hmm. uh, I decided to go buy a certain bar. Now, you know, I don't drink. But, but I had a buddy that always hung out there, and I hadn't seen the guy. It was a Friday afternoon, yeah. and I was through with work. Mm -hmm. I go by there, and he's sitting and talking with uh, a producer for the NBC uh, affiliate here in town who had listened to me on the radio, and he said, hey, have you ever thought about doing television? Yeah, that's the way things you know, happen. And I had never thought about doing TV. He said, come by and let's talk. Next yeah. thing I know, I got a TV show. Yeah, so, I mean, that, that's the way things happen, you know? Uh, and... Uh, uh, so I never, you know, but I never, I never really, I was never one of these compromisers. I knew what I had to do and how I had to do it. And if I was wrong, I was wrong. But, and if nobody wanted to hire me to do it, then so be it. But I was very lucky that a lot of people wanted to see me do it. And I learned one other thing, 
uh, in this business that if you stick to your guns, people will listen. And if they listen, they you get a large audience. And if you get a large audience, that makes a station money. And when you can make a station money, you can walk into the general manager's office and shit on his desk yeah. and he'll just laugh. Yeah, yeah, you know. yeah. Th that's My biggest mistake was uh, I either would stay with a station too long or leave too soon. Mm -hmm. You know, I could never ride, catch that wave. Hey, listen, I was loving, right I, I love to tell the story about the time that I was working in, in Minneapolis and we had a meeting, the program director, the general manager had a meeting and I had started a thing called uh, the Intergalactic Telephonic Talent Show in which you would just go on, on the phone and do whatever your talent was, whether it was singing or tap dancing or whatever. And uh, it, it, it was a sensation. People loved it. And the general manager said, and I don't want you ever to do that again. I said, well, then you can take your radio station and shove it. And I got up and walked out the door. And as I'm walking past the receptionist, she says, oh, by the way, you have a message. And I grab the piece of paper. I throw it in my pocket. I go back home. It's snowing outside. Ronnie says, "What? what's wrong? I said, I just quit. She said, you what? I said, I just quit. She says, what are we going to do? I said, I have no idea. And then I reached into my pocket, and there was this piece of paper, and it said, Bill Moomy, W-I-N-D, Chicago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I called him and he said, I heard about you. You want to come to work for us? So that's what I'm talking about. It's all <laughs> fucking luck. You know, I mean, what are the chances of that happening? I guess 100% because it happened. But, you know, I mean, so a lot of careers in our business are made on luck. You know, That's apparently true. my luck has run out now, but I just, you know, they are they are made uh, based on luck. By the way, uh, well, Jeff, the the, uh, yeah, well, I was going to say, Jeff, you were in the Miami. Are you still in Miami? Oh. Uh, no, you're you're you got to you're, you're muted. You're muted. Uh, uh, right yep. now I'm in uh, Georgia. You're in Georgia. Okay. Oh, OK. Yeah. All right. So good. I think uh, a couple of days and then. Uh, yeah. I'm going to go back to Connecticut. Yeah. Yes. We're in Georgia. Okay. We lost uh, Brian. I hope he calls back because I really enjoyed having him on here. Uh, kind of right on the edge of Florida. Oh, oh there. Here comes. Oh, here comes. Okay. Here comes Brian back again. Um, uh, we lost you a little bit there, Brian, but uh, you're back uh, again. Oh, listen. Was I don't funny. care. It's such a pleasure to have you on tonight. You know. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, Jack, I didn't ask you what you thought about the whole uh, uh, Trump uh, thing this weekend. That, well, I would call it a disappointment. Uh, uh, well, yeah. That's the uh, first thing. But I don't think the, the answer's uh, done there yet. Yeah. How about I'm you? I'm waiting to, to yeah. find out more. How about you, Jack? How do you feel about it? We didn't, really didn't get your feelings on it. Well, I wasn't surprised. Uh, I'm waiting to see what the Southern District of New York does. Yeah, so that's where the rubbers. No, the thing is, I, all I said, I'm waiting to see what the Southern District of New York does. Well, and I said the other night on on my show, things are going to have to get a hell of a lot worse <laughs> before they change any. You know something? I don't think things are yeah. going to get any better. I think we're living in a country right now that is so fucked up that no matter who we elect, it's going to be the wrong person. You know, I think that if the Democrats, if the Democrats put up a candidate and that candidate runs against Trump and by some miracle of God, that person wins, he's going to be a fucking asshole. <laughs> you know, so oh, he I, runs Beto against him. Yeah, he will be an asshole. You yeah. run Biden against him. He will be an asshole. You know, so I mean, who, but who isn't an asshole? I mean, it, it, you know, I'm sure, you know, Trump, we, in Trump, we have literally have a guy who's got mental problems. I mean, he's definitely yeah. got mental problems. Uh, uh, it's, that's, that's the story that the, uh, the fabricated news. Oh, is just, uh, just stop, Phil, with that. The yeah, fact is, this guy, a you're going to say this guy acts in a rational manner? Hey, if people, if the news media was doing to me, what they did to him, he's rational. Uh, you know, I don't know how he. Oh, kept poor, poor Donald Trump! Well, I feel so well, sorry well, for him. He's such a pussy. He can't take it. 
He can't take it. What, what oh, has the guy No, he, he never, he what never, is, he never mans up. You can never say the Trump mans and up. Neither do the Dems or 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 yeah. this panel because they won't recognize. Okay. The fact well, that the I asked I asked Jack a question. I wanted him to. Because he did a whole shitload of things. Yeah, yeah. Well, just like Schiff said, he had proof. He had proof. Where's the proof? Uh, uh, and and when, right, when did you? When did you? Proof? When did you conservatives ever have a good thing to say about Clinton or Obama? Look, we hey, pick our teams, really man. Listen, I believe, we, I'll, we, say, I'll say something nice about Donald Trump. I just got my tax return today. I'm getting a nice chunk of change back. Really? Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Good for you. Yeah. So, you. so thank you very much, Donald Trump. Ta-da. That's the last thing I'm going to say nice about Donald so Trump. So we know you can be bought. <laughs> no, I can I can say when something happens to me that I think is probably is the result of Donald Trump. However, Donald Trump has cost me a lot of money this year in the stocks that I own. Well, no, you just but, No, his decisions uh, have made the gains. No, no, no. He made the market so volatile with his with his tariffs and everything else that it has been very difficult. I've lost I've lost I lost much more money, okay? in the stock market this year than I gain from my taxes. Let me ask you this. On your taxes, what items uh, caused you to get a better return? I have no, I think probably the main thing was just the fact that there was a higher deductible at the top. Uh, you know, uh, there was a $2,600 dedu $26, deductible uh, as opposed to the, I don't know, five 12, or, I think. less than that, I think, before. Yeah. It's 12. Well, I just it's found 12 out that one of my... Uh, uh, one of my granddaughters and her husband, mm -hmm. uh, they're paying yes. $1,500 on the same amount of money that they made the previous year. So their tax bill went up. Yeah. Uh, and this is not now, uncommon for most Americans. And once they see that sticker shock, it's going to be, you know, that's the thing that's going to kill Trump is the economy. Because if people feel that they're that they're getting a, you know their taxes haven't they haven't seen that tax benefit they thought they were going to get he's not on their shopping list any longer they got it in every paycheck you know the, because they were deducting less on each paycheck well, you're not going to get no, as but, much at but, the end no it isn't that they weren't getting as much in the end in this case these people are paying fifteen hundred bucks out right well maybe they didn't take the no the, the no, proper no. you don't you don't know Phil. Hey, I had to change the deductions on my thing because I used to own a home, and I was uh, and I had uh, a tremendous amount of interest uh, that write off. I don't think you can but, deduct that anymore, by the way. In no, the new but tax I, laws. I sold the home, and uh, I never changed the deductions on my W two or W, you know, uh, the form. So uh, I, you know, ended up uh, having to pay uh, you know, quite a bit last year. Mm -hmm. Well, all I know this for sure is, is, is my wife, who's a CPA, hmm. said that this tax reform thing that got pushed through reminded her of the Reagan tax reform thing, and that it's going to cost a lot of people who can't afford it a lot of money. Didn't Reagan raise taxes? No. 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 He gave no. us a... Uh, he, did a he, he, did a, he did an interesting little two-step kind of thing where uh, in the best traditions of conservatives uh, who like to say I'm going to save your money and then spend like drunken sailors mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it was billed as a tax cut but it actually was in the long term a tax increase mm -hmm. and Donna says that she thinks it's going to be the same thing and we're already seeing this Reagan did she's raise already taxes seen it. on social security I'm paying them now. Yeah. Yeah. It's about time. But uh, well, how are your taxes going to do this year, Phil? I don't know. Uh, but I believe that because I'm a subchapter S corporation, there's a special 20% discount uh, right off the top on the taxes that subchapter S's get. Uh, so I think this year I may do very well. Well, okay. So the businessman makes. Are you an LLC or is that something different? Uh, no, I'm a, a corporation, but it's called a subchapter S, where the uh, where the profits and or the losses filter down through your personal return. So if the business Ryan, loses money, 
I have write off. If the business makes money, I got to pay. Yeah. LLCs are a limited liability corporation. Uh, good thing for uh, professionals, for doctors, lawyers, dentists, that kind of thing, mm-hmm. to shield okay. their money. Yeah. There's, but there's most of us in this mer- most of us in this country are just workers, paying mm-hmm. income tax. Yeah. There's a there's a, a re- regular corporation which I think is called a C corp, and then, right. uh, and there's a subchapter S, which is what I am. Yeah, and, I don't know, you know what I was. I was I was incorporated in uh, in Pennsylvania, uh, not Pennsylvania, the, Delaware. The thing about corporations like a like a sub uh, like a C corp is, I believe, unless the amount has changed. Oh, hum, this is getting very boring now. No, but you could only keep two hundred thousand dollars in the corporation. Oh, hum, it's still I, very boring. Distributed look, look Jeff's falling asleep. No, <laughs> no. So, so the uh, you know people Mentally, say the yes. corporations, uh, the corporations are making all this money and yeah, you know, they're, they're yeah, on to yeah, all this money. They can't. Yeah, yeah. Boy, there's nothing more boring hey, than talking about corporations. Hey, look, guys, I got to go get ready for my show. Call me on the other side of the hour if you want to keep on talking about this stuff. Yeah, be glad to have you join us on the intersection. Okay, good talking to you. Bye. Bye. There he goes, Bye. ladies and gentlemen. The wonderful and lovely and attractive Jack Bishop, ladies and gentlemen leaves us and leaves the group. Hey, Tony, you haven't said anything tonight. You said you had something you wanted to talk about, though. Yeah, I actually did. Uh, it's uh, it's about Elizabeth Warren and the Amazon deal. Remember the Amazon deal? They were supposed to come to Long Island City. Uh, oh, you mean so they? Oh, you mean? Uh, they, uh, oh, you mean Zena the uh, the uh, Zena? Pocahontas, the, the Jungle yeah, Warrior. Was, uh, well, they, well, you see, they get, you get it. The Amazon that was coming to Long yeah, Island. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Zena the Warrior said, Princess. So, listen to this. This you're gonna laugh at. What? Yes, prep There's a local paper. There's a local paper. Yeah. In my area, called the Queen's Ledger. So they had they have her here. She gave a speech at the site where Amazon left. So now she's trying to remember how she's going. She's going to, if she you're breaking up on this. Like, listen to what she said, Alex. You ready for this? You're breaking up. This on is what this. she said in her speech. Ready? Okay. She goes like this. She goes. Uh, she says today a minimum wage job in America will not keep a mama and a baby out of poverty. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then she goes. Uh, where is it? Where do we find it here? Hold on. Uh, hold. Does she say that much? Are you taking your reading lessons from me? <laughs> no, I have it here. I'm sorry. Yeah, I like this shit. Oh, wait a second here. Yeah. Hold on. Uh, well, come on, Tony. Like ready? She goes like this. When I was a girl, a minimum wage job would support a family of three, she said. Her mother, she said, when she was able to work a minimum wage job when she was a kid and support three children? Mm-hmm. Is she a fucking liar? Where is her mother working I minimum wage? I worked at for? Jet Burger in Ellsford. Is she, she, she not lying? It was $1.75. She <laughs> said her mother was able to support three kids on minimum wage. Yes. $1.75. They could, they could a long time ago, yes. She's but, a liar, Alex, this woman. She doesn't say anything. No, she's anyone. not lying. No, I mean, no, Tony, she's, that yeah, is uh, true. T- Tony, she's not yeah. lying. I, How can you live wait, on fifteen dollars a day? The, not no today. Trump. Not no, today. But even then, in nineteen seventy-two, oh. uh, my buddy was working at Jet Burger, so I said I'll work there too. So I worked there a week. A dollar seventy-five. Phil, can you support three minimum wage in nineteen sixties? Uh, come no. on, no, yourself, nobody. Come no. on. She talks out of her ass. That's funny because. Uh, Minimum wage when adjusted to inflation yeah. versus the 1960s would be 20 to 22 dollars an hour now. No, uh, dollar 75, and and probably in the yeah. 60s it was a buck and a quarter. Minimum wage when adjusted to inflation yep. is what I'm saying. Well, when adjusted well, to the current rate of inflation, it would be 20 to 22. In other words, an hour. also what he's saying is that minimum wage right now is not the equivalent of of how much minimum wage was back in the 60s. No. Yeah. Uh, and it isn't. You're right. Adjusted for inflation, what he's saying is adjusted for inflation, whatever the minimum wage was in the 60s is what, 20 times more now? 
You can you can look it up on Google. Just type we it in on had, the search and it'll give right there in the search results. We haven't had inflation for fifteen years. Inflation's been at one two percent. Bullshit! Bullshit, it's Phil. One to 2%. But where where uh, are you, are you paying your money out of the same pocket I am? Yeah, I just find that I can't see how you could support three. Well, kids. Wait, look, I'm so, I'm not a big fan of Elizabeth Warren. Uh, wait a minute, was I'm, less than a dollar a gallon. I'm not a big well, in the, the seventy. Hold the early on a 70s, second, I'm not a big fan of Elizabeth Warren's Tony, but I got to say that I find her incredibly intelligent, and I find her facts to be incredibly yeah. accurate. Uh, sure. I don't I don't like her. Because I just there's something about her that rubs me the wrong way, and that's probably not a good reason for me not to like her. Okay, but she well, is, is she here's she question. she's Would not. Would you say she's wrong by saying she can support three kids and herself, a mother, and minimum wage? I think I think ago? I could say that's accurate for that's the for the, for the fifties and sixties. Yes. You think she could? Yes. Three kids. Listen, and listen. In the fifty, in the late fifties, early sixties, I remember seeing gas at fifteen cents a gallon. Okay, I mean everything was cheaper. Everything was cheaper. A loaf of bread was a nickel. Yeah, I find it hard to believe. Well, I, I know you find it hard to believe, but it's in the snow. Am I right, Jeff? We uh, had a two-bedroom apartment in the sixties that, that we have a fifty dollars a month for in Chicago. Hell, when, I was, when I was when I was um, one stop when I was earning when I had a when, when I had a job I can't remember how much I I made in Houston, mm -hmm. but I do remember when I was working uh, in Sacramento, California. This is in nineteen sixty five, maybe. Yeah, nineteen sixty five. I was making one hundred and twenty five a week, and I was living high off the hog. That was good money. But I bet, but you would never make a minimum wage. You always had a good job, Alex. No, but I said I was well. I was making 125 a week. I don't know what minimum wage was then, but I was living well on 125 a week. Yeah. So minimum well, wage probably you, you could live making on. above everything. Else. I mean, certainly, I certainly, think, I certainly, you don't have any room for uh, uh, extras when we're talking about minimum wage back in those days. But I think your mother could have raised kids on that uh, minimum wage. Yes, Phil. Okay, mm -hmm. so it said that the annual inflation rate for the last 20 years, the average is 3.22%, and that over a 20-year period, that means it would double. So basically, uh, that if you took the minimum wage of, uh, let's say, $3 uh, 20 years ago, and you double it, that would be $6. I'm sorry, Phil, I don't, I don't buy that. I think you're doing the math wrong. I think you're, don't show me that. You're doing the math wrong, Phil, because I can say with the money that I made in the 60s, uh, certainly I could have bought, uh, for the money I'm making today, three times what I'm making today. All right? Uh, four times. I mean, it. it yeah. no, Phil, you're, 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 you're doing your math all wrong. That's why you've got an accountant. Yeah, yeah well. Uh, don't. I said, what has the inflation rate been for the last 20 years? Oh, God. It said it averages 3.22 a year. 3.22 uh, a year. I, who, uh, you know, I mean. 3.22 percent. Yeah, but I don't think that that, I, I so don't, if, I think if, you're, if you, at, you're adding it up all wrong. So if, if you, if you took a dollar. I don't want to get into uh, this high math. Right. I don't give a shit. <laughs> I really don't give a shit. But you're working for less than the minimum wage now. Uh, no, exactly. no. I actually I make a I make a fairly <laughs> decent little living. I've got my social security and oh, I've got no, no, my no. That, the SAG after pay. pension. What? The, the Gabnet pay. Oh, right? the Gabnet pay. But no, but uh, that, you know, <laughs> uh, you know. So uh, we do. We so do. We you're do a okay. pensioner. Huh? We do, we do okay. You know. Yeah. We do okay. Yeah. Um, I know you do. We're surviving. Uh, you know, we want to we want to get this whole legal thing taken care of which by the way did i tell you it's been moved we didn't have the uh yeah, yeah. we didn't have that uh, uh the mediation it's been moved now to may uh, why did they agree on mediation and not a no uh, we didn't agree to mediation court. mediation is part of the process you try to solve it through mediation before you're allowed to take it to court and have a trial yeah <laughs> 
So the mediator goes, well, you guys can do this. And, and you know, they hold these mediation meetings and nobody agrees. And then, uh, you so know. It's not binding, the mediation. Uh, no, I don't think it is binding. No, it's not binding unless you agree to it. You know, my my <laughs> lawyer made an offer, you know, and uh, they, I think they're going to be sorry they didn't take it. Mm. You know, but I, we just want to get this thing over and done with. And by the way, my, our lawyer is no longer a full-time lawyer at this firm, but he's still going to work on our case. Uh, so uh, we're already on our third lawyer on this deal. Yeah, that's how yeah. long it's taken. Yeah. You know. Uh, yeah, this is the guy you really like. I really like this guy. Yeah, but I also like the guy that runs the whole company, the whole firm. He's very yeah. good. Yes, Charlie. Three dollars an hour, working eight hours a day, five days a week, is one hundred and twenty dollars a week, which is four hundred and eighty dollars a month. I'll which take it. A- which was a good sum to live on back in the 60s. Well, how much a year was that total? Well, multiply 480 times 12. Well, like when I was when I was growing up in the 50s, like six months. my father never made more than five thousand mm-hmm. dollars in a year, and that was the average wage in America. Well, I just googled it. 1962 minimum wage was a dollar fifteen an hour. Mm-hmm. 63 went up 10 cents. Yeah, and the question is, though, the question is, uh, you know, how much was uh, 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 money worth? In other words, uh, what was the yeah. average? We got to find out what was the average income that. of the average American in the in in the. I know that in the ni- late 1950s, it was five thousand dollars for a family. For a family. I think she works 40 hours. So when we got to the 60s, <laughs> well, I'm saying that, you know, uh, she may be right. She, her, uh, obviously, she is right. Her mother raised her, you know, and she survived. Unless she had assistance and she didn't know it. Maybe they, they misinterpreted it. No, her, there wasn't. You know. I don't think there was assistance, you know. Uh, That's still $50 a week. That's two hundred. you're not coming home with month. 50 though, after taxes, you're coming home with less. Well, There's no taxes. When you make your minimum wage, you don't pay any taxes. Right. You still got to pay the Social Security, no? I pay. Uh, Social Security didn't come in, I think. Social Security didn't come in. uh, Wait a minute. Social Security was here already. Yeah. 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 There's Medicare that didn't come in until the 50s. Medicare didn't. You had to pay Social Security, yeah. Yeah. Uh, But, uh, you know, I mean, uh, all I'm saying about Elizabeth Warren is she's not really lying through her teeth. I think think she's telling a story as she remembers it. Maybe she's a little off, you you know. But um, my parents raised me uh, and my mother and my father on five thousand dollars a year. And today, for five thousand dollars a year, you couldn't live anywhere. You can breathe air for five thousand dollars. Five a grand a month. Yeah, yeah exactly. I used to yeah. lay rugs down to fifty five hundred dollars a month apartment. Huh? Yeah. That's a lot. We're doing a laminate floor in the kitchen. Listen, don't it, 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 you know this apartment? We were paying forty two hundred for a month. Yeah, and wow. and and um, uh, some of them in this building, which is, is a building that needs quite a bit of repair, uh, is um, what uh, seventy two eight uh, th- up to eight thousand dollars in this building. What year did you move into that building? We moved <laughs> in here in two thousand. Oh boy, two thousand eleven, I think. Well, 2011, the economy was still in, in a malaise, and uh, the the price of real estate hadn't skyrocketed like it just it, like it has in the last couple of years. Yeah. It, it it wasn't until maybe 2015 that things started to upswing, uh, you know, and so and and also rents were lower. Uh, you you rented at a good time, and it was still 4,200 a month. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, uh, seven thousand for what you have now. Well, I is was probably paying, not pay, bad. I was paying something like twenty five hundred for my place downtown, and it was a one bedroom yeah. apartment. Uh, yeah, so, but how much is it now? How much is it now? I I really don't know. I think it's probably up around in the three thousands. That's all. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. but uh, you know, whatever. Anyway, uh, well, that's about it. I'm going to start running the theme. Uh, I, I, 
It's been uh, been nice, uh, everybody. Uh, thank you so much, Phil, for being with us tonight. I also thank uh, the lovely and attractive uh, Jeff for joining us. Brian, th- this has been a treat, you know, and we can get you to join us. Uh, uh, and, no problem. And, and, and good luck with your job and also good luck with your love life. Yeah. yeah no shit. You know, I, I wish you, I, I hope you find the person of your dreams. That's what I hope for you. I want somebody that's so good to you that you don't get grouchy anymore. Yeah. <laughs> then I won't call. Yeah, then you won't call. <laughs> yeah, there's a catch-22 there. Right. Thank you, Charlie. I really appreciate the call tonight. And the same goes for you, Tony. I think you've all been absolutely terrific. Uh, and uh, I would like it now if you could be, give a big wave goodbye, and so will oh, I. Great. Okay? There we yeah. go. There they go, ladies and gentlemen. See you tomorrow. Oh, yes, I see you tomorrow. Uh, you see, I'm, I'm, I'm wearing my uh, my little uh, cap from uh, uh, the, moon, 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 <laughs> the Moonlight Bunny Ranch. Okay? Uh, in tribute to uh, my old friend, who's now dead. More people die. He died, too. Uh, uh, Dennis Hoff, who owned the Moonlight Bunny Ranch. Uh, I'm uh, out of here now, uh, but I will be back tomorrow night because that's what the, it says on the plaque outside. Uh, stay tuned now for Jack, Jack Bishop. He's next with the intersection tomorrow night at uh, 8.30. we got a sports show. It's called The Arena with the Franchise MC at 9.30 Eastern Time. It's Damian Chaplin in the exchange. And then when you come back tomorrow about 10 o'clock, I'll be here. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye.